आउज़बिल्लिमशैतवानजीम बसमीम् अल्लाम स्टूडेंट्स आई एम योर साइंस टीचर एंड इट्स योर साइंस बुक अमेजिंग साइंस वी विल टेक अ स्टार्ट विद चैप्टर नंबर वन यूनिट वन और चैप्टर नंबर वन दैट इज़ क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ लिविंग थिंग्स Now, what is meant by classification? Classification of living things. It is the division of living things into groups and subgroups on the basis of their specific characteristics. Because in this world there are a lot of animals, a lot of plants, and it's very difficult to study them in detail. So that is why they are classified in different groups and subgroups to study them easily. Now we will take a start before going into all details and explanation. First of all, we will have a read of this chapter and then we will do explanation and details. Classification of living things: we can arrange everything in the world into three groups. Some things are living now, others were once living, and some were never living. Dividing things into groups helps us to understand how all the different things in the world fit into a pattern. So, in this world, the uh, living things they are divided into their specific groups, and it helps us to understand all the different things in the world that is fit into a pattern. Means that it helps us that the living things they are placed in a specific sequence or specific groups so it's easy for uh, for us to study and understand them scientists who study living things are called biologists biologists divide things into different groups this is called classification so the living things they are placed into different groups and that is known as classification Biologists classify all living things by dividing them into large groups called kingdoms. Now these biologists they classify all the living things by dividing them into separate groups and those groups are given specific name on the basis of their kingdoms. We will study them in detail. That is kingdom Monera, kingdom Protista, kingdom Fungi. kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia we will discuss that in detail each kingdom is a huge group the two main kingdoms are those of animals and plants biologists also know already know about more than 1 million different kinds of animals and more than 3 lakh 50000 kinds of plants so of course there are so many animals and so many plants in this world so there was a very uh, much need of dividing them into groups and subgroups so we can understand them easily scientists divide each kingdom into smaller groups of living things which have particular features in common so that they can study them more easily so these all large kingdoms they are further divided into subgroups and they have some particular some specific features means characteristics these groups have some specific characteristics in common they are common in them so that is why they are placed in those groups on the basis of their common characteristics specific characteristics before going into the details that the scientists divided the living things into kingdoms there is also there are particles known as viruses which cannot be placed in any of the kingdom why because viruses they have a very unique property we will study that how they have unique property and why they cannot be placed in any of the kingdom that is viruses are small particles which show both the characteristics of living and non living things means at the same time they can be living also and they can be non living also so we will study that how they are living and how they are non living and why they cannot be placed into any of the kingdom viruses are made up of chemicals which are just like those found in your body they are like chemicals but how they are living and non living some scientists say that viruses are not really alive 
they can only survive by entering the cells of animals plants or bacteria once inside a cell the virus the virus uses the cells materials to live and reproduce some of the scientists have concept about it that they are not really alive means they are not living that is they can only survive by entering the cells of animals means when they enter into the cells of animals plants or any bacteria they use the virus uses the cells materials means the cells materials the the cell is the cell of animal and plant that is living that has different organelles etc so they feed on the cells materials of animals and plants and there they live and there they reproduce means reproduce means they make their copies they increase their population the virus can make hundreds of copies of itself the healthy cell is taken over and destroyed which can make the animal or plant very ill so the healthy cell of the plant or animal that is destroyed that is being eaten by the virus and that is why the animal or plant that can become ill and how viruses are non living viruses are non living in the case when they are outside of the cell we have discussed about that when they when they are living that is inside the living cell of plant and animal but when they are non living that is when they are outside the cell they are in the crystal form they are not alive they do not have uh, the ability to multiply and reproduce so they are non living in that case viruses can cause diseases such as the common cold and influenza in human beings influenza that is a very severe type of flu and uh, common cold is also a very cold fever with cough and flu etc okay that is first is kingdom protista Prost protists are small living things that cannot easily be classified as animals or plants now these are living organisms which cannot be we cannot say that whether they are animals or plants because they have a mix characteristics some of characteristics are like animals and some of the characteristics are like plants we will discuss its different examples first is amoeba an amoeba is a single celled protist that lives in water it eats by wrapping itself around its food and then absorbing it through its cell membrane this is amoeba and it's a single cell means it is uh, it consists of only one cell it is made up of only one cell and it lives in water and it takes its food by wrapping itself around the food wrapping means they make they take the food inside and they wrap their round their body around the food and then absorb that food into its cell membrane into its body this is now is take a start perimetium a perimetium is a protist that is covered with hair like threads called cilia the cilia help the perimetium to swim about in water it has a kind of mouth and stomach to eat and di digest food it has a mouth on one side and it has a stomach on the other side which is not too developed but at that they can eat and then excrete the food and they have cilia which cilia are around the cell membrane small projections like this cilia here they are like here and that helps in movement another example of protist is euglena a euglena is a strange kind of protist it can make food using sunlight like plants it has an eye spot which helps it to distinguish between light and shade it uses a long whip like projection called a flagellum to move about in the water so a euglena is a strange kind of protist why because it can make food using sunlight like plants uh, it makes its food from the sunlight 
like plants and it has an eye spot the eye spot it is responsible to differentiate between dark place and light place it that is why it's a strange and it has unique characteristic to distinguish means to differentiate between light and shade it uses a long whip like projection whip is like it's a flat like belt type this is you can see it is a flat uh, but here it's it it is uh, it looks like a thin thread but it is basically flat that is why it, a whip like projection this is the projection called a flagellum this this is known as flagellum to move about in water now this flagellum helps them to move then comes with bacteria bacteria singular bacterium means one bacteria is known as bacterium and plural is known as bacteria bacteria are very small living things made up of only one cell some kinds of bacteria can make their own food most bacteria live in the air in water or in the top layers of soil but there are millions of bacteria that live on your skin and inside your mouth nose and lungs so bacteria can live in different uh, habitats they can live in water also they can also live in the upper layers of the soil and of course on our skin and mouth and nose inside our body there are millions of bacteria that is why when we take food we are advised to wash our hands properly before taking in taking in the food because the food may contain lots of harmful bacteria they occur in various shapes such as round elongated or spiral that can be round elongated or spiral we will discuss that in detail in explanation some bacteria are useful they help to make vitamins cheese and yogurt some bacteria are harmful they cause diseases such as tuberculosis tetanus typhoid fever and cholera tuberculosis you have may have heard about tb okay then is tetanus uh, it's it uh, mostly occurs in small children and typhoid fever and cholera cholera is that is uh, you can say jisko heza lag jata hai that is um, cholera is that type of disease we we'll start with algae singular alga or alga algae usually live in water many algae are present in the surface layers of the water in seas and lakes chlorococcum is a single celled alga that lives on trees and damp walls this is chlorococcum it is um, algae it's name of a specific algae that lives on trees and damp walls you may have noticed that uh, the trees which are covered with large uh, green um, carpet like structure or the walls which are uh, which become green and um, that a large body a type of um, carpet like appearance occur on the walls also so they are basically alga chlamydomonas is a single celled alga that swims about in water wall walks as an alga that lives in colonies and moves about freely colonies means they lives in groups and moves about freely this is chlamydomonas when we see through light microscope so chlamydomonas appear like that somewhat and wall walks lives in basically in colonies in groups Spirogera is also an alga that does not move at all. Sea weeds are also algae. They occur in many different shapes, sizes and colors. Spir Spirogera, it's a carpet like structure. This is an alga and uh, sea weeds are somewhat like that. Then comes with kingdom fungi. Mold mushrooms Toad stools and puff balls are also examples of fungi, singular fungus. So these are also different names of fungi. Fungi do not contain the green matter chlorophyll, so they cannot make their own food. They do not have green material 
known as chlorophyll which plants have and with the help of chlorophyll the plants they can prepare their food through sunlight so fungi do not have this property fungi like to grow in dark damp places damp means wet wet places most fungi feed off dead and rotting plants so their food is they feed on dead uh, and rotting plants rotting plants also those plants which becomes expire or um, they they are dead or they are of no use so they feed on such plants some fungi are parasites parasites means they live in the body of living organism this means they take their food from living other living plants or animals all fungi are made up of thin threads called hyphae that take in food from the living or decaying things around them so uh, fungi have structures known as hyphae and these hyphae are responsible for sucking or taking food from the living or decaying means that decaying that is a dead organic matter you can say uh, that is uh, uh, things around them so living or decaying things around them they take their food fungi take their food through hyphae hyphae are basically special structures uh, they the tube like structures and they take food through hyphae we have discussed this in detail and uh, in explanation then you will easily understand Okay, some skin diseases such as athlete's foot, scabies, and ringworm are caused by fungi. These are the human diseases caused by fungi. Ringworms are somewhat; they are uh, on skin. Circular patches appears. So um, that is uh, caused by fungi. Athlete's foot is somewhat disease like that. When you wear so, uh, when you wear shoes for a long time, or you wear socks for a long time, and they become the uh, your feet become sweaty, so such type of um, such type of disease occurs. Athlete's foot. Lichens. Lichens are organisms consisting of fungi and algae living together. Basically, lichens are organisms which have both the characteristics of algae and fungi. The fungi need the food that the algae provide, and the algae need the fungi to protect them. So they live in both fungi and algae. They live in a um, same place or group, or they have mixed characteristics of both the algae and fungi. So they help each other. Help each other. Lichens are very hardy plants. They can survive the coldest weather and the harsh. harshest winds by growing close to the ground lichens have no leaves stem or roots they can grow on hard surfaces such as rocks and walls lichens grow very slowly and can live for thousand of years they usually grow in moist conditions but they can survive even in the dry heat of the desert moist conditions means wet conditions or where is there is a lot of humidity or moisture jahan pe nami zyada hoti hai us they can live in that in that in that place better most lichens are sensitive to air pollution so the greatest variety can be found where air is cleanest mosses and liverworts mosses grow best in moist that is wet or uh, where there is a lot of moisture and shady places most mosses are only a few centimeters tall they are small flowerless green plants which lack true roots and shoots they have stem and leaf like structure they lack true they lack means they do not have roots and shoots and they but they have stem and leaf like structures but they are also very uh, Uh, tiny you can say they are not that developed like stem like uh, trees now these these are trees these are not mosses or liverworts on you can see this green appearance on the trees at the bottom of the stem of the trees these are basically lichens tiny hairs hold the moss down on the ground 
There are tiny pear shaped capsules on thin stalks above the leaves. Inside the capsule, there are spores which can grow into new moss plants. Uh, you can take a help from the video in which I have explained. I will be explaining this in detail so you will understand this um, concept clearly. Liverworts may be leaf life, leaf like mosses, or they may be flat and branched. Both forms reproduce by spores formed in capsules. The capsules are basically special structures in uh, mosses and liverworts, and uh, in these capsules, inside there are a lot of spores and when the capsules they break down or they split so these spores come out of these capsules and then uh, a new mosses or a new liverworts can be developed from those spores ferns ferns are plants that like to grow in damp shady places ferns have tiny tubes inside their stems and leaves these tubes carry food and water from one part of the plant to another. The leaves of fern plants are called fronds. Each frond is divided into lots of leaflets. Okay, this, the, this leaf is known as frond. The whole leaf, the main base of the leaf is known as frond. And these are leaflets. Each projection of the leaf is known as leaflet. All ferns reproduce by making spores. They also consist of spores, but where they are present? Fern spores grow in tiny clusters on the underside of the leaflets in special pods called sporangia. Now, where the spores of the ferns grow? Now, this is the leaf. The sporangia, they are present on underside of the leaf. Underside of the leaf, for example, this is this is the upper side of the leaf and this is the underside of the leaf. So if this is the leaf, so the spores, they are arranged in uh, line, sporangia, they are arranged in line underside of the leaf and they are in circular form, brown in color and these sporangia have, inside they have the spores. So when these sporangia split, spores come out, they fell on the ground and they can produce other ferns. Each sporangia splits open and releases the spores which then fall to the ground. Now we'll study about seed bearing plants. Seed bearing plants means those plants which, which are produced from seeds or those have seeds. Gymnosperms. For, uh, seed bearing plants they are divided into two types gymnosperms and angiosperms. First of all we study about gymnosperms. The word gymno means naked or that can be seen clearly above the plant means the uh, seed of the plant that can be seen clearly with the naked eye and some seeds they are um, when uh, they are uh, when they are, uh, you can say, you place it in the soil and then from that a plant can be developed. While some seeds, they are like, you can see the fine uh, cone, they are, uh, they are basically produced on the um, outside of the plant and you can see them visible. Okay, gymnosperms are seed bearing plants that are non-flowering. Now such uh, plants which are seed bearing uh, the gymnosperms they do not have a flowering plant these are large trees you can see and they do not have a specific flowers so they are non flowering plants they have well developed roots stems and leaves you can see stem of course these are large trees so they have very well developed roots stem and leaves they have fine needle like leaves they have fine needle-like leaves. They produce seeds in special structure called cones. Pine cone or you can say it's the basically seed of the pine trees. Cycas and pinus are examples of gymnosperms.
and you, uh, these trees are basically uh, much grown in the northern areas or um, such areas which are very much um, on high from or high from the ground second type is angiosperms angiosperms are the seeds which are enclosed in the um, which cannot be seen with naked eye or which are enclosed in the ovary of the plant or which can be that is um, which can be uh, cultivated inside the soil angiosperms are seed bearing flowering plants but they do have flowers gymnosperms in that they were non flowering while angiosperms are flowering plants both are seed bearing but the seeds of gymnosperms are visible while the seeds of angiosperms are not visible while gymnosperms are non flowering while angiosperms are flowering plants they have well developed roots stems and leaves they are classified into two groups monocotyledons and dicotyledons angiosperms are further divided into monocotyledons and dicotyledons first of all we discuss about monocotyledons in monocotyledonous plants the floral parts are usually arranged in groups or multiples of 3 floral parts floral parts are means the flowering parts the flowers basically they are arranged in groups means they are arranged in one group or multiples of 3 that is the 3 uh, in number the leaves have veins running parallel to one another most monocotyledonous plants have a fibrous root system they produce seeds with one seed leaf cotyledon so uh, they have their leaves have veins which are parallel to one another uh, uh, that this basically i will show you this everything with the diagram that how they are parallel to one another and how uh, what type of fibrous root system they have fibrous root system basically means they have a very dense and uh, huge type of roots uh, and uh, their seeds have one seed leaf Uh, or they are that can, their seed leaf cannot be divided into two halves all of this we will discuss it in detail some common examples of monocotyledonous plants are wheat rice maize and lily uh, as they cannot be divided into two they are mono mono means one one seed that cannot be divided like you can say wheat or rice that cannot be divided into two sides then dicotyledonous dicotyledons di means two and cotyledons that the seed can be divided into two in dicotyledonous plants the floral parts are usually arranged in groups of four or five their leaves have veins arranged in a branch network Most dicotyledonous plants have a tap root system. They produce seeds with two seed leaves. Cotyledonous means they can be divided into two halves. Tap root system is different from fibrous root system in a way that they are more dense and huge, while they are like somewhat simple and um, they are not very dense. Some common examples of dicotyledonous plants are hibiscus, peas, beans and castor oil plant. The animal kingdom. We have studied about plants. Now we'll take a start with the animal kingdom. These were the simplest organism we studied about starting from viruses till the uh, basic plants. Now we'll come towards the animal kingdom animal kingdom is further divided into invertebrates and vertebrates first of all we'll discuss about invertebrates and then the vertebrates animals can be classified into two groups vertebrates are animals with backbones and invertebrates are animals with out backbones backbone means like we are human beings and we are vertebrates so we have a backbone in our or vertebral column in our back 
means our skeleton that can be that can uh, walk that can uh, be vertical so we have a backbone while those who, uh, those animals which do not have backbone they are known as invertebrates invertebrates scientists have already named about 1 million different types of invertebrates 1 million different types of invertebrates they have named invertebrates scientists have already named about 1 million different types of invertebrates so the scientists place the animals into vertebrates and invertebrates and the simplest of all are sponges we'll start with a sponge sponges are underwater invertebrates with no heads arms or legs you can see from this diagram basically it is a living organism but it is very simple and it does not have any type of head arm or leg they live in water they do not move about from place to place they attach themselves to rocks or plants they take in water containing lots of tiny plants and animals through small pores called ostia they have small pores on their body small pores and these uh, special structures are uh, are known as ostia and through this ostia they absorb water they take take in water and take out water with another structure known as osculum after the food and oxygen has been absorbed the water is pushed out through one large mouth like hole called the osculum this is osculum basically the large holes you can see these are osculums while the small pores are known as ostia ostia are responsible for absorbing the water while osculum is then responsible for taking out the water then comes with the more complex than sponges the animals they are known as salentrates salentrates are those animals which are somewhat more complex than sponges jellyfish and corals being belong to a group of invertebrates called salentrates they have hollow bodies and live in the sea hollow bodies means they they have a standing body they are vertical or they are standing body and they live in the sea a jellyfish looks like an umbrella with arms called tentacles you may have you may have seen the uh, jellyfish they have arms um long arms and they are known as tentacles and these tentacles are basically responsible for their locomotion for their movement and they can they can uh, move with the help of these tentacles corals corals live in the sea too but they stay in one place all their lives means they do not move and they stay at one place while that of jellyfish can move corals that stretch over large areas are called reefs they can be very colorful means when corals uh, they uh, they uh, they take a large they they grow in su such a large number when they grow in such a huge or large number then they are known as reefs and they can be colorful each reef is made up of millions of individual coral animals called polyps now when they come in um, each reef is made up of millions of individual coral animals now as the reef is basically uh, you can say a large or huge group of different cor corals while when they come in a uh, group uh, large group they are known as reefs and in that reef each individual coral is known as polyp each tiny polyp has a cylindrical body which is attached at one end to the seabed the reef or another polyp now this polyp this is responsible it has a cylindrical body and it is responsible to attach to the seabed means to the floor of the sea or other reef other partner reef it is attached or it is attached to any other polyp other individual reef at the other end the polyp's mouth is surrounded by tiny tentacles uh they are uh, uh, they are also responsible tiny tentacles but they do not that uh, these uh, tentacles are so tiny that they do not move freely polyps eat tiny plants and animals now worms 
All worms have soft thin bodies with no legs. Some worms live in water, some live on land and others live inside animals, plants or humans. Most ribbon worms live in the sea. Now some worms are rounded like this you can see the earthworm while some worms are ribbon. Ribbon worms means they are flat like a ribbon. Like tapeworm. Tapeworm um, if you see the diagram. So tapeworm is somewhat flat that is why they are known as ribbon worms. And tapeworm uh, lives in the intestine of human. The bodies of earthworms and leeches are individual, uh, are divided into sections called segments. Most leeches live in water. They have a flat body with a sucker at each end. They use the front sucker to feed on the blood of fish and other animals that live in the water. So leeches have a sucker somewhat like that. It has a rounded um, structure which is known as sucker. They, uh, through this uh, sucker they suck the blood of animals <coughs> and some fish. Flatworms like, look like ovoid leaves or long ribbons. Ovoid leaves also they are leaves of some plant known as avoid leaves and or long ribbons means they are ribbon like flat that is why they are known as flat worms tapeworms and flukes live inside human bodies where they can cause serious illness so ta tapeworms uh, and flukes they live in the intestine of human beings and then they can cause serious illness and how these tapeworms or uh, flukes they are transferred to our body if we take um, uh, some undercooked food means if the food is not properly cooked uh, or the meat of the cow or contaminated water if we drink uh, such water which is impure which is not pure which is not fresh uh, or which is not filtered when we take such water or such food which is not properly cooked so such uh, these worms can be transferred in, on, into our body echinoderms these are uh, the word echino means spiny and derm, derma means skin so they have spiny skin that is why they are known as echinoderms means their outside skin is somewhat spiny they have spines on their body and their inside body is soft Starfish, sea urchins and sea cucumbers are invertebrates that live in the sea. This blue color, this is sea uh, urchin and this is the starfish. They are called echinoderms because they have spiny skins. The arms of a starfish are covered with hundreds of tiny tubes called tube feet. The tube feet help the starfish to move about and also to stick to rocks or shells like if this is the uh, starfish the body of the starfish tubes are here are the tiny tubes like this if i can draw like that tiny tubes they are very tiny and through these um, tiny tubes are which are known as tube feet they help to move and they also uh, stick to rocks or shells of other small animals they also help the starfish to pull apart the shells of cockles and oysters in order to eat the soft flesh inside. Cockles and oysters are also small animals which have soft body inside but outside their body is a shell. So these two feet of the starfish, uh, they just pull apart the shells of cack, uh, cockles means they tear or they just uh, pull the shells of the cackles and oysters and inside uh, which the flesh of the um, uh, oysters is present they eat that flesh starfish use their tube feet to take in oxygen from seawater so tube feet has two um, uh, functions uh, uh, with one uh, one function is to take oxygen from the seawater as it is a tube like structure and the other is they take um, they tear the shells of oysters and they eat the soft flesh of that uh, oysters then come with mollusks uh, mollusks are those animals with a soft body or the word uh, mollusk 
mollusk is derived from a word mollus which means soft bodied animals a mollusk is an invertebrate with a soft body and no bones they do not have bones most mollusks have a hard shell on the outside to protect their soft body some mollusks such as cuttlefish and squid have a shell that grows inside their body the octopus is a mollusk that has no shell at all some mollusks mollusks live in water and others live on land so there are three types of mollusks mollusks that is some mollusks have hard shell in uh, 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 they have hard shell outside their body to protect their body while uh, like hard uh, hard shell if i give you example that is the snail snail uh, you can take the example who have hard shell outside the body and some mollusks such as cuttlefish and squid they have a uh, shell inside their body this is a uh, this is uh, you can see this is cuttlefish and uh, the other is octopus okay the third is uh, third category is octopus which has no shell at all they have completely soft body some mollusks live in water and others live on land arthropods uh, the word arthro pods means it is derived from erythron word erythron erythron means joint and podos podos means feet so arthropods are those animals with jointed feet or jointed legs beetles butterflies crabs and spiders belong to a large group of invertebrates called erythropods erythropods are animals that have jointed feet their bodies are divided into separate sections with a hard outer covering called an exoskeleton okay um, now here these all you can see beetles butterflies and crabs they have you can see how their feet is jointed like that feet has different um, joints they have different joints okay and their body is has uh, some of the tropods have exoskeleton means outside skeleton their outside body is hard and the inside body is soft centipedes and millipedes are also arthropods their bodies are divided into segments each segment has either one or two pairs of legs now like for example this you can see in the diagram centipede sections or segment means you can see the black color the body is divided into segments these are basically segments or sections and in each of the part for example it's like that so in each of the segment between each segment there are a pair of legs these are pair of legs means on one side and the other side or you can see this is the one side or the other so it's a pair of leg present on each segment this is segment so a pair of leg on each segment spiders and scorpions are a type of arthropod called arachnids uh they are given the name arachnids uh, due to a special uh, characteristic that is because they ha have eight legs all arachnids have eight legs insects such as butterflies bees and cockroaches have six legs crabs lobsters shrimps and water fleas have several pairs of legs now scorpion you can see spider beetle um centipede crab uh and butterfly these all are arthropods now we are done with invertebrates we have studied about different groups of invertebrates now we will take a start with vertebrates vertebrates can be classified into five different groups five different large groups that is fish amphibians reptiles birds and mammals we will discuss one by one first of all it is fish fish are vertebrates that lives in water 
all fish breathe through gills most fish have a skin covered with scales nearly all fish have fins to help them swim young fish hatch from soft eggs called spawn now uh, they fish they live in water of course they breathe through gills they have a um, special structure gills present on underside of the um, eye and it is like somewhat a hole through which the exchange of water takes place these are special structure gills are special structure through which exchange of water takes place uh, through gills they take inside oxygen and take out carbon dioxide most fish have a skin covered with scales there means they have a scales like that scales they are somewhat if you uh, see fish uh, live so you can say that their scales are somewhat like plastic like texture so they have scales uh, they have fins to swim and young fish hatch hatch means come out from soft eggs called spawn the process in which young fish hatch from a soft eggs eggs this is known as spawn or spawning then it comes with amphibians okay examples of fish can be trout or salmon fish etc amphibians an amphibian is a vertebrate that spends part of its life in water and part of its life on land so amphibian is such type of bird that spends part means half of its life in water and half of its life on land when amphibians are young they live in the water and breathe through gills like fish as they grow older they develop lungs to survive on land so means amphibians they have a very special and unique type of uh, characteristic means when it is young when it lay eggs in water uh, when it produces into um, a small um, uh, tate pole uh, that is a um, small baby of frog so they live in that time they live in water but when they start growing and they become adult they transfer themselves towards the land so they have both the property to live in water as well as in land most amphibians have smooth skins but some toads are covered with warts so most of the amphibians they have smooth skin while some of them have warts warts are basically they are rounded projections like jis tarah dane hote hain body pe they have rough and tough warts on their skin a thick slimy substance called mucus protects the skin and helps to keep it moist to keep it moisturized so they have a mucus um, uh, that is produced by special glands mucus glands uh, present on the body of the frogs so that keeps their body um, moist moisturized amphibian eggs are called spawn they are soft because they have no shell so amphibians eggs are special because they have no uh, shell and they are soft example is frog and toad and there are also several types of and kinds of frogs but main examples are frog and toad now we'll come to the third category of vertebrates that is reptiles reptiles is derived from a latin word rep reptile that is uh, meaning is creeping or crawling means in this uh, such type of animals are uh, included which um, they do not they they crawl crawl for example if we take the example of lizard and crocodile so lizard they crawl on the walls and while crocodile they wa- they crawl on the land lizard snakes crocodiles alligators turtles and tortoises are all reptiles they have dry scaly skin and breathe through lungs uh they lay eggs on land they the eggs of some reptiles have leathery shells while others are hard like birds eggs so some of the reptiles they have leathery shells means their uh, shell is somewhat um that is uh, flexible you can say or you have you can say it's rough and tough and uh, that is the, their shell is not hard while some of the uh, reptiles their eggs are hard like that's of the birds eggs then we start with the birds um, birds are the only animals with feathers all birds have wings but not all of them can fly the birds are divided into two categories fly flying birds and flying less birds flying less birds so flying birds examples can be that is uh, eagle 
and hummingbird etc which you can see with your um, in your daily life and some cannot fly such as hen ostrich and penguin etc a flying bird can travel faster than any other animal birds breathe through lungs they also have special structured lungs and they can breathe through lungs all birds hatch from eggs all birds come out from eggs they are produced through eggs usually the female lay eggs in a nest of course you have seen the nest that birds they lay their eggs in a nest the parent birds feed and protect the young birds until they can look after themselves okay then come with the last and most uh, complex and largest uh, group of vertebrates is known as mammals now mammals the word mammals is derived from a word mamma mamma means breast so mammals are those animals which consist of breasts these are the specific structures in which milk is produced in the female body and these female they feed their young ones on her milk now cats dogs goats horses monkeys giraffes elephants whales and dolphins are mammals now you you will be amazed that whales and dolphins from a childhood we used to uh, think that whales and dolphins are fish but they are not fish they are basically mammals which live in water so mammal mammals can live in water and as well as on land you are also a mammal yeah it means we human being you, we are also a mammal most mammals are covered with fur hair or bristles uh some mammals have fur on their body some have hair and some have bristles bristles are the very hard type of hair um uh, that are spiny type of hair which are somewhat stingy so they have bristles on their body they breathe through lungs as we are human beings so we have lungs in our body so we can breathe through lungs a female mam mammal gives birth to babies and feeds them on milk she produces herself okay prehistoric vertebrates means uh, the very old or ancient vertebrates which existed uh, in the ancient time or the very beginning of the life many of the animals that lived millions of years ago looked very different from the animals that live in our world today like for example dinosaurs you can see they were living millions of uh, before millions years Uh, so they look different from today's animals extinction extinction means those animals which uh, with the passage of time they their species they are extinct means they are uh, they are finished or they are removed from the world uh, due to some reasons uh, if they do not get a specific environment or um, they are extinct because of some disaster etc About 65 million years ago the giant reptiles died out or became ex extinct. Giant means the large or the big or huge reptiles. They died or became extinct means they became finished or uh, they ended. Many scientists believe that the world became a very cold place around this time. The giant reptiles died because they were too big to hibernate sleep in winter and had no fur or feathers to keep them warm so the giant reptiles died because they were too big to hibernate because they couldn't hibernate means they uh, take shelter um, in cold so as they were too big so it were difficult for those animals to hibernate to sleep in winter to uh, to take a shelter so and they do not have fur also so it was difficult for them to survive scientists know what they looked like by examining fossils skeletons what are fossils skeletons or impressions formed by the crushed bodies of dead animals in very old rocks so scientists know what they look like by examining fossils like 
how scientists came to know that such type of uh, animals they exist in um, ancient time or very old time so because they they got some fossils um, um, fossils and water fossils they are the skeletons or the remainings the dead remains of the plants or animals which used to be present on uh, in uh, the um, in the ancient time um, and at that time uh, when they become extinct or when they died so their parts they have left somewhere and uh, they are left somewhere in the old rocks between the old rocks so scientists they uh, examine they uh, they just took those parts of the bodies of animals or plants and then they used to study them and uh, then with that time uh, with the uh, with um, with those uh, with the help of those fossils then they discover about them okay students we are done with this chapter and uh, today we'll discuss about its exercise first of all i will make it clear that you have to take a neat notebook uh, you have to take a notebook that one side of the notebook should be plain and the other should be with a, a single lines okay that will be your science notebook the plain page will be uh, on the plain page you will draw the diagrams on the uh, lining page of course you will write down your uh, exercise question answers etc second thing you have to start uh, with uh, ink pen blue ink pen and black ink pen so you should uh, start with that and uh, uh, we will uh, discuss about the exercise how you will do it and whatever i will tell you that you, ha you have to do in your notebooks i will tell you what you have to do in notebooks and what not first of all it is um, a small type of activity uh, first of all you should do that and uh, that is number two this number two activity you have to do that is what classification group do the following belong to now these are some names bluebells primroses frogs turtles and rabbits these are some um, organisms you have to classify them into groups like if this is bluebells you have to find out that they are included in monera kingdom monera kingdom protista fungi plantae or animalia you have to uh, just find out yourself that in which kingdom they are uh, present then comes with the frogs turtles and rabbits that in which um, as they are vertebrates frog turtles and rabbits they are vertebrates so you have to find out whether they come in the category of fish amphibians reptiles birds or mammals so this is your homework or uh, small activity second uh, small activities give only one feature means one characteristic that insects crabs spiders and centipedes have in common as these four are all are arthropods so just you have to find out only one characteristic that why they are placed in arthropods this is your uh, activity okay come towards the main exercise these are answer questions uh, these all answer questions they are um, done in um, in the form of notes uh, you should come to school and just purchase the notes from the uh, bookshop and uh, all of these questions are solved in that bookshop and you have to copy that in your neat notebooks all of these 10 questions you have to copy them in the in your neat notebooks and these all questions are discussed in the lectures so you must have to do these questions in your neat notebooks then come towards this question number two uh, this i will discuss over here uh, no need to do it in notebooks you can do just in books uh, complete the table by putting a tick or a cross into each space okay first is these are the features means the characteristics then vertebrates are given that is fish amphibian reptile bird and mammal now these are the five vertebrates and these are some characteristics now you have to just put a tick in the front of any of the vertebrate whether this characteristic is present in that of uh, any of the vertebrate or not first of all starting with the first feature is or characteristic is backbone so backbone is present in what is it present in all of the these five groups of course why because these are vertebrates fish amphibian reptile birds and mammals they are vertebrates so they have vertebral column or backbone so you have to put a tick to 
each and every group then come fins fins are present in only in fish no fin is present in any of the amphibian reptile bird or mammal so fins are only present in fish scales are present in fish okay uh, okay scales are present in fish then comes with lay eggs which of the following group lays eggs so that is fish lay eggs amphibian also lay eggs reptile also lay eggs birds also lay eggs while mammals do not lay egg so put take into uh, in the block of fish amphibian reptile bird has live babies means they give birth to the babies so of course they all lay eggs so mammal do not lay egg they give birth to the young babies so you have to put only tick in the front of mammal here here are absent in fish amphibian reptiles have feather uh, reptiles have scaly skins dry skin birds have feathers and of course mammal have hair so put tick only in the front of mammal damp skin uh, that is wet skin so of course that is uh, fish do not have damp skin only uh, amphibians have damp skin skin because they have mucus structures on their body which keep it moist while others do not have damp skin feathers feathers are of course the name indicates that feathers are only present in birds so put tick in the front of bird milk glands uh, as the name indicates that is mammary glands are only present in mammals so uh, so put tick in the front of mammal gills gills are present in fish we discussed and also in amphibian because amphibian have two life um, uh, two lives that is in water and on land of both so gills are present in fish and in the young tadpoles of frog while when they become adults so these gills are replaced by lungs so put um, tick in the front of uh, fish and amphibians while others are absent lungs lungs are uh, absent in fish while it is present in amphibian reptile birds and mammals these four groups have lungs uh, question number three state which group each of the following animals or plants belong to now you have to do this in your neat notebooks you 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 have to just do this in your books not in notebooks just put tick in your books you do not need to do in notebooks question number three you have to do in your notebooks uh, and this is your homework that these um, organisms are given and you have to find out in which category they fall uh, these animals or plants belong to in which group they are placed fawn mouse mushroom dolphin beetle rose trout snake earthworm seaweed frog amoeba pine tree bacteria robin moss octopus starfish you have to make a list you have to draw a line and um, then uh, you have to uh, separate them as a plant and animal and then you have to write down in front of it that in which um, group it is included they are included this you have to do in your notebooks question number four also match the organism in, to its characteristic as you have all studied it we have done it so you have to match it and do it in your neat notebooks identify the animals question number five this you have to do in your book just write down the name in your books that what type of organism is this uh, what is this what is this and what is you have to find out and just write down this thank you